afternoon, everybody. Uh, today is Monday, July 1st. You're at the Hunter Hudson Reorganization and Regular Meeting. Can we please stand for the flag? Thank you. Allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, liberty and justice for all. Can I get a motion to open the meeting? Motion to open the meeting? Second. Um, can I get a motion to approve the reorganization agenda as stated? Motion to approve the reorganization agenda. Second. At this time, I'd like to administer the oath of office to our superintendent, Michael Trombley. Sorry. <laughs> I, Michael Trombley, do solemnly swear that I will support the Constitution of the United States and the Constitution of the State of New York, and I will faithfully discharge the duties of superintendent of the Hendrick Hudson Central School District according to the best of my ability, effective July 1st, 2024 through June 30th, 2025. Thank you. Now, Mike is going to uh, administer the oath of office for myself as district clerk. Raise your right hand. I kind of touch to sound we swear that I will support the Constitution of the United States and the Constitution of the State of New York, and I will faithfully discharge the duties of the district court to the Hunter Central School District according to the best of my ability, effective July 1st, 2024 through June 30th, 2025. Okay, so now we're going to uh, for our two new board trustees, Tori Boudin and Lauren Stanko. Can you come up? We're going to administer the local office to you. <laughs> Okay, so we're gonna move up to the front. Why don't we do that so we want to get pictures? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we'll do for you first, okay? Okay. Mm -hmm. I'll say okay. So you can see how I do it. And then I, Corey Boudin, do solemnly swear that I will support the Constitution of the United States and the Constitution of the State of New York, and that I will faithfully discharge the duties of Board of Education Trustee for the Hendrick Hudson Central School District according to the best of my ability, effective July 1st, 2024, through June 30th, 2027. Thank you. I, Lauren Stanko, do solemnly swear that I will support the Constitution of the United States and the Constitution of the State of New York, and that I will faithfully discharge the duties of Board of Education Trustee for the Hendrick Hudson Central School District according to the best of my ability, effective July 2024 through June 30th, 2027. Nominations for president of the Board of Education for the 2024-25 school year. Do I hear any nominations? I'll nominate everything else. They will give us any other nominations. Can I have a motion to close the nominations for board president? Motion to close. Can I get a second? <laughs> Can I second my nomination? <laughs> <laughs> um, 
The next nominations are for uh, Board of Education 2024-25 Vice President. Can I get a nomination for Vice President? I'd like to nominate Amelia Silverman. Any other nominations? Can I get a motion to accept the nomination of Amelia Silverman for Vice President? Can I get a second? So that ends our nomination for congratulations to our new president and vice president. So I will hand over the meeting to our new president, Erica Mills, for the 2024-25 school year. Do we have to motion We can. We can do a roll call. If you want to do that? Do we have to? No. Okay. All right. Congratulations. I turn the meeting now over. I do have to administer the oath office for the president and vice president. So, that's Mills for president. Okay, you want to do it right here? You want to do it in front? I can do it right here too. Do I have to stand up? <laughs> I, Erica Mills, do solemnly swear. Wait. I, Erica Mills, do solemnly swear that I will support the Constitution of the United States and the Constitution Constitution of the State of New York, and that I will faithfully discharge the duties of Board President for the Hendrick Hudson Central School District according to the best of my ability, effective July 1st, 2024, through June 30th, 2025. do solemnly swear that I will support the Constitution of the United States and the Constitution of the State of New York, and that I will faithfully discharge the duties of Vice President for the Hendrick Hudson Central School District according to the best of my ability, effective July 1, 2024 through July 30, 2025. Over to our new board president, Eric Mills. Yeah. Do we have that thing for exempt that we need to leave? I'm going to need that. I don't know. Okay. Mm -hmm. You know what? I, I guess now I'm just thinking about it, you guys didn't say, usually you do first, second motion, and then all of you say, right, usually you have to, yes, we didn't do that. No. Yeah, so I think we need to do that. Okay. All right. All right. All right. If we go back to... <laughs> okay, so for President, Jeremy Basso made a motion. Who seconded the motion? I'm going to do like Second the motion. All in favor? Amelia yeah. seconded the motion. Yeah. All in favor? Okay. For vice president, who oh, made the motion now? I made the motion. You mentioned Tamika second. All in favor? Wait. I I'm in favor, but can I just say something? Sure. Or am I not allowed to say something? Okay. I I'm just a little nervous because I know that it's such a heavy job during the day and how we are both teachers and we're cut off basically in our classroom, that it's gonna be, I don't think the public realizes how overwhelming of a job being president and vice president is. So uh, I just wanted to put that out there because I, I know as a teacher, you are cut off in the classroom. So if something occurs, but I'm just gonna do the motion. So I'm, just, I'm just, I'm nervous about that. And I wanted to put that out there. Well, the good news so, is I'm available most of the time okay, during the day. We'll leave. If I'm unavailable, somebody else can go in place of yes. for anything. Okay. Yeah. Okay. 
it, yeah, that's how we've been doing it. So if in the past, if Alexis or I weren't available, we would invite the rest of the board to potentially come, because there's gonna be a lot of things during the day that Amelia might not be able to attend, but then we'd open it up to, so like, she, like we've been doing. Okay, so if Amelia can't attend, like, because you, you work from home, right? Yeah, Tamika's been attending. And you work from home? <laughs> yeah. yeah. Yes, it'll be an honestly be, for whoever's available. Yes, because they are never available. Well, and if there is something that we, we will, I think what we will manage this without it. Okay, I just want to make sure there's a yeah. And I think also it's like important to remember that we're a team. So um, if one of us, you know, she's my backup on, mm -hmm. on signing things and, and things like that. But at the end of the day, we all have equal. We're all equally. Trustees are equal in all of our duties and our and our voices and our all of that is equal. So we'll make it work. Just one point of privilege. So we will, as the administrative team, we will handle the day-to-day -day operations of the district and keep all board members informed and make sure that uh, we put in place a structure such as if there's an agenda review that it's it's flexible to the leadership schedule and we'll make it work on our end. Okay. Okay, now I'm gonna close. I'm sorry about the confusion. Just going to make a quick comment. Um, I think that there's nothing that Amelia has ever stepped up to do that she hasn't done 100% of the way and even beyond that. So um, you got this. And if you don't, can't make a meeting, people here will help. So just know that you always have our support. Thank you. So we move on with the, the um, consent agenda, right? We, are, we, we only approved, what did we get through approving, we Carmen? Um, we only got through approving, I think you have to go down to where the organization consent agenda. Okay, so we have to make a motion to approve the consent agenda. Can you make a motion? Okay. Second. All in favor? And just for the record, I did ask ahead of time if anyone needed a point on the consent agenda, and the answer, that was a no. Yeah, we that was Okay. So now we're doing so. So can I have a motion? To approve the approval of appointments for 24 25. Motion to approve. Second. All in favor? Can I have a motion to approve the reorganization consent agenda items? Motion. Second. All in favor? Now we, we, can someone make a motion to approve the regular meeting agenda? Motion to approve. Motion to approve. Second. All in favor? And then we have to approve, we have to approve the consent agenda separately, right? Yes. Yeah. Can someone make a motion to approve the consent agenda? Motion. As it stated? Second. All in favor? Um, do we have anyone signed up for audience comments on non-agenda items? No. Okay. Are we at the policy already? Yeah, Sure, we'll do a brief superintendent's report. Uh, congratulations to our new trustees and also to uh, our new board leadership. I look forward to working with you uh, on behalf of the, of the district and look forward to your leadership and guidance. Also want to recognize uh, it is July 1st. We as educators get to have two times through the year where we get a second chance uh, where we get to start over. Uh, July 1st is the is the busy season for district office and then also we, we look 
forward to be getting in September as well, too. Uh, so thank you to my administrative cabinet, uh, Dr. Reller, uh, Ms. Shookman, and Ms. Joy, who have been with me through the first year and want to say welcome to Dr. Garcia and Ms. Figuerella as they join our team today. And we had a wonderful marathon meeting this morning as we, uh, as we were moving in and getting everything organized. So we look forward to working on behalf of the students at Hendrick Hudson. And I know that if the community is watching at home, uh, this is a, a, a meaty agenda, but just know that this is the meeting where the board authorizes a number of items that allow us to do our, our job as a school district. So that is the purpose of this reorganizational meeting, not only just to elect new board leadership and welcome new trustees uh, to serve the district, but also to allow the district to be able to conduct the majority of its operations. So we're approving appointments of people to positions, we're, reporting, we're approving the ability for the administration to do that, and the only uh, do certain things, and the only entity that has that authority is the board acting as board of education so it's a very lengthy meeting but it's also a very important meeting and thank you to the board for i'm sure uh it took a long time to go through the very uh deep agenda so thank you for your efforts on that and welcome to the summer there are no follow-up items from the last board meeting and that concludes the superintendent report <laughs> Are there any audience comments on agenda items? Okay, so now that brings us to our um, policy readings. And I do not have my computer in front of me, which I usually do. Um, we're starting with the code of, code of conduct. Okay. Oh. So this is the Hendra Hudson High School District Code of Conduct. This code of conduct was developed by a dedicated committee representing each school bargaining unit and parent organization in the district. The committee utilizing the existing district code of behavior in the model. You guys are not going to be me read this. <laughs> Motion to work Second. All in favor? <laughs> <laughs> I was waiting for Jeremy. <laughs> that's usually this thing. I was thinking I was the president. Yeah. What? <laughs> yeah, so there were the items that were in red. Did everyone get to review the items that were, that were in red that we had discussed the last time? I think there was one additional Stephanie's um, about the uh, video videotaping, we yet changed the wording. Yeah, we changed the wording there. Uh, my issue is with the, the dignity coordinator at lot number, I think page 13, line seven, says that we are going to address personal biases that may prevent equal treatment of all students and staff. And I, we haven't had any implicit bias training in this district whatsoever. So it's it's here. But what have we done to ensure that we address personal biases that may prevent equal treatment of all students and staff? I mean, I don't really know many other districts that haven't had this training. Is that something that we can look well, into? Certain, certain, yes. And also, uh, it's part of our job as administrators especially when receiving that training, uh, but also in every decision to make sure that we implement it based on policy or uh, board approved protocols. And there's many layers that uh, we work with our administrators on. So we always have the appeals process to make sure that that occurs. As an example, if there is uh, a DASA investigation and it is unfounded at the building level, there is an appeal process uh, which reviews the, the investigation which reviews the follow-up on all parts. And then if that, as an example, uh, is appealed, it comes to the superintendent. So you're getting different layers and you're getting different views. Uh, I understand that, but where's the training for the teachers and the staff? So I-, I... So we'll definitely look, look through the professional learning committee on yeah. how we might be able to best support that. That's a good follow-up by the professional learning committee. I feel like this was written in somewhere, written into the initiatives of the strategic plan as well. I don't know if it was as specific as this, but it is part of the, it is one of the 
The wording might be different, but it's part of our bullet points. For, it's for the spirit of the LOI. Mm -hmm. Of number four. Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay. Okay, and then the did you everyone had a chance to review the wording on the videoing? Yes. Any type of recording, streaming, or other electronic transmission or storage? You saw see that? That's because it was just recording or taping. Okay, so we're good with this because this is. You have to approve this, correct? Right? Do you have a concern that you lost it? No, I just want to make sure that things in red that everyone got to review them ahead yeah. of time. I think we're just making modernizing it the way people would do what it's referred to as recording, right? Mm -hmm. Right, David. Mm -hmm. Yep. What happens if students take the teacher? Uh, at this point in time, they are not allowed uh, because that would be non consensual. Okay. Just want to make sure. And most, most teachers do not allow uh, cell phones in their classroom. But we don't have any ban on cell phones. There is not an uh, official board policy on cell, on cell phones as of yet. That was something that we. That was something that we wanted to get information from the site based teams on before we made a decision so that it was what the faculty principals, what they all wanted in their homes. And, and, we would, the we, and then the sure. governor might do something, but yeah. And then for some, in the meantime, we want to be back from them before that happens so that um, we're putting a policy in place that they want. And why put a policy in place that may change the governor mm -hmm. in some number of months and have to redo all the work. There's been really other policies that we didn't touch yet. So we And then if she doesn't do anything with it, then we can decide what to do based on that process. And the other part is that, and what we've discussed in the policy committee and we've also discussed in the shared decision-making larger team is that each building sort of has its own, it's not codified in policy, but each building has its own Rules around so okay. I mean, like the middle school, they were supposed to be locked up all day. So if you're if they're out, then there's if they, they that's like the rule of the building. And then the high school, each each teacher have had the option to have their students put their cell phones in. There's a bid in every single classroom. Right, but without a policy, it's almost impossible to manage. It becomes more of a distraction and something else that the teacher has to do. So no, absolutely. I, I think the yes. policy in place takes the pressure off of the teacher. Being the bad guy, and you're just like, this is the policy the board put in place. So I and let the teacher be, teach. Yeah, I think it definitely is something needed. Um, we just needed to do a little more research on it. Okay. So I can't. I'm just gonna motion it to approve policy. Code of conduct. Code of conduct. Second. All in favor. We're gonna have to do that too going forward because if i'm if i'm the one reading the policy i can't make a motion yeah. i can't or unless we alter who else who's going to read policy going forward so it takes that away from me it takes that away from my ability if i'm reading the policies to make motions on the policies and stop reading you know so just okay one more today Okay, this is the first reading of our um, policy. This is policy 1000 community, community relations, public comment at board meetings. And this is code 1230E. Um, because we feel community engagement is important, the Hendrick Hudson Board of Education welcomes public comment during this portion of the meeting. Please know that the first reading. Second. All in favor. Oh, wait. I want to get out of the call. Yeah. I was going to, yes. Yeah, we're going to change it. The that has the card. Um, can we just change that there will be a timer present, a three minute timer yeah. presented on the board? Yes. We just need to change the karma. We, we've we been doing it differently, yeah. and we just never codified the change. So, approve the motion. The motion we didn't approve. motion to approve, we a motion to waive the reading. I think this is pretty close to what we're doing. Um, it was just the one thing about holding up a sign that they used to do that, but we haven't done that. Yes, it's the fourth one, one two, three, four. Yeah. 
I guess you just take out the whole 30 second warning and then yeah. finish with the red card. The whole thing. Will be timing comments and indicate when the speaker's time is finished. Yeah. I would say but, fourth bullet should just be that first sentence. And then maybe if you wanted to put an additional bullet after it that just said there will be a three minute time, there will be a timer presented on the board and take out the other pieces. Last one. I, I, the soccer, pull up the yellow cards. We're not doing it. I agree with you, Jared, because if I came, if I took time out of my day yeah. to, to come and make a comment, but I wouldn't want anyone on the board to say, well, audience member A already made that comment, so take a seat. Yeah, I'm not very well articulated, and then you get up and say something else and have a more intelligent way to say the same thing. Why should you be silent? I don't like that. I don't think it should be. So the problem with that is, is that we only have a 15-minute comment section, so someone has to make a motion to extend that comment period so we can have you only get five people to comment if it's all about the same five things and you have five more people someone you have to you have to guarantee that someone at the table will make the motion to allow that to go past the 15 minutes whereas if you have you get to the third person with the same comment or the same topic you ask them to step aside and then have the other person come up so I'm not saying that I agree with any of I'm being kind of being devil's advocate but if there's here. Six people with six topics, the same problem happens with no duplication of that. Right. Mm -hmm. So maybe the happen. maybe the 15 minutes is a problem. It can go either way. Because you could somebody could be sitting here waiting to talk about some other completely different topic and we never get to them. Is that happening? Yeah. It's never happened time. with our board. It's never you have to go watch it through prior to yeah. Yeah. But you've yeah. extended yeah. the comment. We kept yeah. extending we the comment periods. We oh, always made a motion right. to extend the comment period, but in the past, in past, in other boards, what happens is, let's just say, I'll give an example. Someone comes up and wants to talk about masks. You get to the third person that wants to talk about masks. You really keep, the board president can ask that person to, that we've already heard about the topic based on that board. And it happened right before. It's happened before. Well, I guess that's fair too, though, because at the end of the day, the board is the time and when you have got masks, you could say no masks. And you have to do it anyway because it wasn't your decision. Yeah, and that is that's also part of. Okay. I, don't, I, I guess I don't allow people to see whether it's repetitive or not. I mean, if we want more community engagement, that's the only way we're going to get it. We're going to start limiting people or silencing them when they have something, even if it's the same repetitive thing. We want them to show up here. Yeah. So you're not okay. I so think you leave saying, it at fifteen. Minutes. You have to. So someone at this table, no matter what, when we get to fifteen, has to make a motion to extend that comment period. Well, I don't think the repetitive comment. <laughs> Yeah. I don't think we've had enough people. I mean, yeah. I've done it a couple of times, but it hasn't been enough. Like, we want people to come. No, we've yeah. had it before. We had it where we extended it multiple times. <laughs> but I, I, don't, I don't think we've had it in the minutes. Based on that meeting, we make the decision, which will typically be yes, extend it, unless it's like some crazy hospital issue and we're using that to just sort of. I guess the, yeah, the one thing is when the, the thing is to think about policy is like we're the seven people sitting here today, but next year or the year after might be a whole nother. Which is why I want not to have someone else choose who gets to talk. Yeah, so what are we taking out? Let's just be clear. The bullet. I think the bullet, the bullet regarding the uh, bullet pad. Yeah. Out of the comments. That could be the bullet that just becomes we'll have a timer on the screen for three minutes. Okay. Before we make that change, let's just I'd like to run it by our legal counsel first. Yep, I'll go with that. Okay, mm -hmm. just to make sure that we have all this in proper order and we're following protocols properly, legally. Um, the only thing I'm asking, I'm, I'm wondering, is if we have to put, we should probably explain to the public within this policy how we will extend the allotted 15 minutes so people understand that it's 15 minutes, but there is a, an action to extend that period. We should add something um, about that. Does everyone agree with that? So in that where it says to maintain an orderly meeting, the board has allotted 15 minutes for each for the comment period, which may be extended by board consensus. Yes. Yeah. And we should yeah. probably write make by make by making a motion because it should be very specific. Do we want to include anything in here that um there's nothing about using names? when they're addressing us so that's in that's in the main i think main code 1230 isn't that that's in the original 
That's okay. in the first one. The first one. So this okay. is the exhibit. I but, think we should talk to the attorney because that was this whole other piece that was it in twenty two twenty three. We got emails about that they are not allowed. So not allowed. Um, to limit the names, right? Well, so there was a question that was raised. Is it legal to limit who is addressed at the table if they're an employee of the public? It's my understanding. Again, we probably should check with legal counsel. It's my understanding that the questions should be uh, general in nature. Uh, it's not a, a dialogue that if you do identify have a concern about a particular employee, you address that person. Superintendent, yes. the superintendent can update the board. Yeah. We we uh, we just updated that box, didn't we? Yes. Yes. So you, you know those emails? Yeah. Yes. Questioning that policy that's been longstanding, and I think it's something that is practiced and probably statewide for most of our. Yeah, I mean, I, I think it's a matter of protecting our staff. Yep. Um, protecting our students, and protecting our parents, and protecting our community members. So they, no one should come in here and address anyone but the. Or president, um, or someone else sitting in the seat at the time. Um, you can't call out independent board members, you know, and you cannot name names of employees. It does get tricky when people come up here and want to pay compliments to staff, you know. Um, I don't know if I necessarily like bang the gavel on that one, but you know, it is a. You're not really supposed to do that either. It's kind of both both ways. So just a, a conceptual framework. The perception is that often this is a public meeting of the board, a public board meeting, and there's a distinction. It's a meeting of the Board of Education in public, and the board is conducting its business in public to provide transparency, uh, to provide insights to the public so they can see what the board is taking action on. And comments, uh, I believe comments don't even have to be offered. Uh, boards can set to restrict all comments. This board has chosen to allow those comments. Uh, so just just as a frame of reference, if, if you're thinking it is the Board of Education meeting, and they're really not even questions, they're comments from the public, so to help inform the board uh, or to to uh, help the board with its understand the, the citizens that it serves. If there's a specific concern about any particular action of an employee or uh, administrative policy or procedure, that should always go to the superintendent first, and then the, the board can be up to get back to superintendent. Yeah, and in the past, we have arranged our meetings so that we're, I mean, you used to sit through meetings for, if you want to make a comment that wasn't on an agenda item, you would sit through meetings for two to, you could sit through meetings for two hours until you got to make your comment. So we rearranged that so that the public comment on non-agenda items is in the beginning. So people can come and make their comment and then leave if they like. Um, and then the other thing that we have committed to, and I believe is written into the other policy, is that we, we allow comments on agenda items prior to us voting. That was another thing that used to be after the board voted. Um, and that's actually what NIFA recommends. So again, like Mike said, this is a meeting of the board, but us as a board, what we've written into policy is so that we can get feedback from them. And we actually had a recent conversation about this because this policy is coming back up through our 3000, our policy review. So. All right, so this will come back with the changes to the next meeting for approval. Are there any committee reports? Um, are there any other comments from the business? Oh, here. Okay. I need. I want to. Um. I. I think we do it exactly. We don't close the meeting. Right? Uh, we have to close this public public meeting. So, well, you could. You can motion to move to exec with the understanding that no board action will be taken during exec. Only to open. Or only to close the meeting. Okay. That would be the only okay. board action that would occur in exec. So, do I need a motion? Motion to move to second. Motion to move to second. Second. All in favor? The Board of Education of the Hendrick Hudson School District 
Court of Ethics will convene for the purpose of collective negotiations under the Taylor Law, medical, financial, credit, or employment history of a particular person or corporation, or matters leading to the appointment or employment history of a particular person or corporation, or matters leading to the appointment or employment or promotion or demotion or discipline or suspension or removal of a particular person or corporation. Now can I have, I'm sorry, do I now, now can I have a motion to remove that? Motion to Okay, all in favor? 